Kodak Black is one of the most controversial young artists in the music industry, and over the years he has had a bunch of fights and beef with many enemies, most of which you won't even hear anybody talk about. And that's exactly what we are going to talk about in this video. So I present to you all the enemies of Kodak Black from his rise till date. Getting back to the video, let's start with the first enemy on our list. But before we get to that, if it's your first time here on the Rap Messiah channel, make sure you destroy the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. Once you've done that, hit the like button below and comment down below telling me what rappers or topics in the world of rap you would like me to see me cover here on the channel. And now that I'm sure you've done those things, let's get right into talking about the first Kodak Black enemy on our list, and that'll be NBA Youngboy. So here's a complete timeline of the history of the beef between Kodak Black and NBA Youngboy. Beginning with the year 2017 and continuing up to their most recent exchange, the feud between Kodak Black and Youngboy escalated to a great extent. At the beginning of April 2020, tensions between the two rappers were stoked when Kodak accused Youngboy of assisting the police in their investigation of a stabbing that had taken place at Kodak's residence. Youngboy denied these allegations. Still, following the event, Kodak and Youngboy engaged in a series of social media exchanges involving shots. In fact, at one point in time, it appeared as though the two were friends and even collaborated on a few tracks together. However, as time passed, their friendship has become more strained and the two of them have taken to making digs at one another. To tell you the truth, if you haven't been paying close attention, this beef was a little confusing. It all started in August of 2017, when Kodak Black took shots at NBA Youngboy on Time Never Mattered. Many of Kodak's followers were under the impression that the rappers were directing some of the lyrics towards Youngboy when he rapped. But I hope I don't go broke again, I'm killing young babies. Kodak never going broke again, you a free agent. Fans thought that Youngboy's Time Never Mattered video was a response to Kodak's jabs on Time Never Mattered, but neither artist said anything directly about the rumours. After NBA's artist Quando Rondo was filmed burning merch from Kodak's label Sniper Gang in November 2018, tensions between Kodak and Youngboy began to rise. Hey, man. The video incited rage among Kodak's circle, prompting them to exact revenge by setting fire to a shirt produced by Never Broke Again LLC. After some time, the Sniper Gang crew from Kodak issued a video stating on social media in which they threatened Quando Rondo while brandishing guns and threatening statements. Quote, Y'all are making a mess of the Sniper Gang. You get the sense that I don't typically burn shirts. At the time, one of the participants said, I really burn asses and you feel it. In a video chat in 2018, Kodak disclosed that he had forgiven Quando, but again, a year later, he accused the rapper of stealing his style. After the release of NBA's AI Youngboy 2 in October 2019, Youngboy was seen hanging out with Kodak Black's ex-girlfriend Dej. The sighting gave rise to rumours on the internet, due to the fact that Dej had been seen leaving loving comments on Kodak's Instagram account weeks before the sighting. In spite of the rumours that were spread by the fans, neither artist has commented on a report. On the other hand, in 2019, Kodak Black was found guilty on federal weapons charges and given a sentence of 46 months in prison. The release of Youngboy's single, Letter to Kodak, came soon after the news of his conviction and sentence. Youngboy raps directly to Kodak about how much he misses him on the record and says, No one control my life. Kodak locked up and I miss him, so I'm a cynic guy. Jeopardizing blessings on no eyes. Following that, Liana Yaya Mayweather was reportedly taken into custody on April 4th and charged with felony aggravated assault with a deadly weapon after she was accused of stabbing Lepatra Lashaye Jacobs, the mother of Youngboy's child. The incident allegedly occurred on April 4th. According to the authorities, the incident occurred at Youngboy's house, where the rapper was reportedly spending time with Jacobs at the time. An altercation broke out between the two of them after Mayweather showed up and demanded that Jacobs leave. When Jacobs continued to stand her ground, the argument was taken into the kitchen, where it is alleged that Mayweather stabbed her multiple times. The authorities said that Youngboy was telling the police that they could do their whole investigation. Kodak decided to involve himself in the drama by making the accusation that NBA Youngboy was cooperating with the authorities. I don't know what the hell they mean, but I fully cooperated, lol. They don't call it a little piece at all. 
Rather, they call it fully big. Kodak wrote in the comment section of an Instagram post about celebrity gossip. Anyways, that weren't any even posted to be attached to your name. Damn, lil brah. Don't do that, lil girl, like that man. I mean, I'm locked up, but this shit made it look like it was some other shit. If you want to know something, you have to tell me. This crap makes it seem as if you were scared. Then people left trying to charge you with it or something, which is why you screamed. That ain't so drip, man. You are aware that we do not holler at democratic people. Young boy went on Instagram live after seeing the comments that Kodak had posted on his Instagram account. Young boy yelled, My yeah, these niggas be on my dick so bad. These niggas watch me from a jail cell, man. These niggas watch me from a jail cell and be on my dick so bad, nigga. Niggas bitches. Niggas be writing academics about me, man. I ain't telling ag academics to post shit about me. Niggas hoes. I ain't never paid attention to a nigga. Especially from no motherfucking cell, nigga. The fucking nigga watching me fuck. Then what a nigga say? A nigga say me. Nigga say I cooperated. Bow, bow, pain, bow, 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 what you stupid bitch? Huh? Bow, 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 my wife? Huh? Bow, my wife say Ayana, get up. Ayana Mayweather who had been arrested the day before for alleged incident involving a stabbing, made a cameo appearance in the video as well. After that, young boy continued to insult Kodak by calling him a variety of disparaging names. Since their beef over the weekend, Kodak Black and Youngboy have traded shots multiple times on Instagram and other social media platforms. On April 6, academics disseminated a video clip in which Kodak Black criticizes Youngboy while on the phone from behind bars. <laughs> During the course of the call, Kodak Black stated, Also, I want you to do something, boy. I want you to quit playing with me, boy, for real. Talking about sucking a dick. What are you talking about, homie, suck a dick? Additionally, Youngboy shared video clips of Kodak Black exposing himself during a live concert, in addition to other memes that were insulting to Kodak Black. After the exchange of words, Youngboy published a post on his Instagram stories, in which he gave the impression that he was finished with the conflict. According to what he had written, When I'm dead, you can accept that all the pussies shit these come with. Until that time comes, we ain't going for it while I'm still alive. And that was it with Youngboy. Kodak Black still went on head-to-head -head on a beef with the rapper Poo Shiesty. You should know him from his hit singles, Back in the Blood. The beef started when Kodak made the statement on Instagram on March 8th, 2021, claiming that he was the inventor of the spread money flex. After hearing Lil Baby rap the lyrics, posting money on the gram, I invented that, on Lil Durk's finesse out of the gangway, Kodak Black made the decision to speak up in response to Lil Baby's performance. Kodak said the following. <laughs> I was just listening to my boy Lil Baby's song. Uh, he, he, now nah, he was on my dog Lil Durk song. He say, uh, just posted money on the gram, I invented that. That's some crazy like that. Stop playing Lil Baby. yeah. Brought dick is back, all that Pulling back like this, yo, all that Please. Kodak continued by saying that he hopes people will give some credit to those who are deserving of it Throughout the entirety of the clip, the ad-lib known as Blurred Which is typically connected with Poo, could be heard coming from Kodak Because of this, the rapper was under the impression that Kodak was making fun of him as well Poo posted a response to it on his Instagram stories Saying that this shit here is so lame to me, lost all my respect, at Kodak Black. However, as soon as he realised that Kodak had not mentioned him in the post, he quickly deleted it. Soon after, Kodak set the record straight during one of his Instagram live broadcasts by stating, Bout we really run over shit. Kodak responded, Keep that shit as cute as possible. 
Don't put so much weight on it, bro. That is exactly how things are. People on Twitter were quick to respond to this argument almost immediately. Kodak Black and Pooh Shiesty really need to put an end to this beef by competing against each other in a money-spreading competition. And after that, Kodak Black still got on a beef with Adam Ross, a popular streamer on YouTube and Twitch. It's mid, it's mid, it's mid. I think it's good. It all started when Adam Ross ranked different rappers on a stream in a tier list. One clip from Adam's stream has gone viral and he's seen commenting on the rapper while trying to place Kodak on his list. Adam said, Kodak is talented, but not GOAT level. However, it isn't clear if they were Adam's words or he simply repeated what he heard from others. Adam also asked his viewers, when was the last time you listened to some Kodak? Soon, fans of both rappers started debating Adam's comments on Kodak as this clip went viral on social media. Kodak has responded to Adam's videos, as it has gathered a lot of reactions. The rapper has asked people to stop sending the clip to him, addressing the whole drama surrounding Adam's list. Kodak says he doesn't know who Adam is and doesn't care about what he has to say. Along with the video, Kodak even shared a tweet in which he wrote, I ain't even going to do nothing to this jit. I'm just going to keep grinding, shining, getting money and making these boss moves. Success is the best revenge. Although he did not mention Adam, Kodak Black went on to reply to the rapper's tweet by saying, he never dissed him. Whether it was a misunderstanding or a jab at each other, fans of Kodak and Adam were busy debating and supporting their agenda. One tweeted, Adam Ross, how you figure Kodak Black is not a goat, when he influenced several generations. Another Twitter, who seemed to be siding with Adam, wrote, bro, why you hurt over an opinion? Adam Ross shouldn't have no say in our culture. Why isn't he naming a list of pop stars? True definition of culture vulture, what has he done for hip-hop culture for us to even care what he says? Kodak Black is GOAT level for his music and contributions to the community, said another. Anyhow, the beef didn't get much further and disappeared soon. The next enemy on our list is Ebro. It all started in 2018, when during an interview with Kodak Black, Hot 97 host Ebro Darden touched a raw nerve when he brought up the young rapper's impending trial for sexual assault prompting Kodak to end the interview and storm out of the studio. Man, at this point, it's a pleasure to meet you, man. Um, you know, looking at all your, your cases and everything you've been through, and I know the recent one right now is very sensitive. And with respect to, you know, everybody involved in that case, you know, we can't get into details today. Um, but, you know, we take sexual assault here serious. And we can't, you know, uh, get into details, but we hope you know, to have you back so we can have a, a deeper conversation about that because, you know, this is a serious topic and we're hearing these stories a lot. What the fuck y'all talking about? You seem upset that I brought it up. I feel like <clears throat> sometimes when niggas like we going through shit, like y'all be entertained by bullshit. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. So like change the subject on from the walk out. We'll change which subject? Just whatever, like. Well, no, they the, tried to change the subject. They was talking about the moon landing. That's bullshit, too. So uh -huh. talk about something else. Well, I was saying, I, I think... We I don't th have to talk about nothing else. We could be done right here. All right, I'm going. Say less. Well, that's a bummer. Uh, but soon Ebro addressed about what went wrong and how he thinks he and Kodak could both have handled things better. It was a cool moment up until Ebro said, with respect to everybody involved in that case, you know that we can't get into details today, but you should know that we take any allegations of sexual assault very seriously here. However, we do hope to see you again so that we can discuss this matter in greater depth. Following the interview, Ebro was met with an equal amount of criticism and praise regarding the way he handled the situation. It would be irresponsible for us to do the show where we talk about all the things we talk about, social justice, the Me Too movement and Trump, to have the artist on the show talk about how talented the artist is and never once mention that in April he faced a sexual assault charge with a woman being raped in a hotel room. Ebro goes on to elaborate that he neither anticipated nor desired the interview to turn out the way that it did, despite the increased attention that it garnered from the show. I had no intention of having it turn out that way, he says. I'm disappointed that it turned out that way. I'm sorry that it turned out that way because I honestly believed I was trying to have a balanced conversation with a person who has a crazy past and is dealing with some very real things. Rosenberg accused Ebro of continuing to antagonize Kodak Black after the latter had become upset. But Ebro defends himself by pointing out that he was defending his co-stars after Kodak cursed at them. 
Rosenberg criticizes Ebro for continuing to make Kodak Black angry after he was already upset. He acknowledges that he could have dealt with the situation more effectively, but claims that he doesn't want anyone to disrespect his show. In the interview, Kodak Black's body was visibly shaking and he didn't particularly want to respond. We don't have to talk about nothing else. We can be done right here, right now. And just like that, Kodak left the building. The next enemy on our list is 808 Mafia Boss. Kodak Black and Southside, the boss of 808 Mafia, had beefed primarily over Young Miami. It's not the first time Kodak and Southside have butted heads, despite the fact that everyone seems to be talking about their most recent blowout. Both parties had previously clashed over the same issues in an online forum. However, Kodak was the one who ultimately offered an apology. Kodak Black took shots at the duo in one of his songs while he was serving time in 2018 for the crime of having Young Miami become pregnant by Southside. He rapped, I bought Young Miami a ring, she bought an 808, baby. When I see him hit that bitch in her stomach, the way I keep this shit too real, they say I'm fucking up my money. At the time the song came out, it was known to cause some trouble, as Southside's quick criticism of the rapper after the song came out shows. Southside posted on Instagram the following message. Hey, 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 somebody tell Kodak, suck a dick. How about that? Then get up out of jail first, pussy. Kodak apologized soon after Southside's reply, but the latest trouble shows that the two artists never really got on in the first fight, no matter how hard they tried. It appeared that the rapper Kodak Black and the 808 Mafia boss and producer Southside were currently involved in a dispute that is fraught with tension. What exactly is the problem between Kodak and Southside? And how long has this competition been going on? Here is everything that is known about the events that led up to their massive online popularity thanks to social media. Many of the City Girls followers are aware that Southside is presently involved romantically with one member of the duo Young Miami. Despite this, Kodak made the decision to mention the Act Up rapper by pinning her name in the comment section in his Instagram live broadcast. Kodak pinned the name Carisha Brownlee to the comment section of his live broadcast, which Southside did not take particularly kind to. After that, the successful producer went onto his own Instagram live, criticized Kodak for talking about his girlfriend. During the live session, Southside said to Yak, This man talking about you gonna punch my baby mama in the store to summon with my daughter. Y'all expect me? Y'all want me to say nothing? Man, you and whoever else feels kind of way to suck my dick on Pyro, nigga. I mean it. Pyro gang. I don't give a fuck that a nigga locked up. I hope that nigga get out. I, I, I heard the money running low on the case. I really want to help pay for the motherfucking case so he can get out. Just so I can go I can go at it with this little nigga. Like, don't ever, don't ever play with me. Don't ever try me like that. Ever in life. And then went on to imply that he would be ready to fight the rapper on a one-on-one -on -one when he is in Florida. Southside asserted himself by self-assurance by stating, We can bump fight too. One week from now, I'll be back in Miami. Pull up in any location where we can get a bump. Please do not bring any form of security. Southside continued to take shots at Kodak Black in a subsequent live video, in which he claims that the rapper isn't actually the person that his public image portrays him to be. He continued by saying, These N-words is not in the trenches every day. I'm familiar with these expletive people you've been hanging out with. Them some hoes, bruh. The producer went on to say that they believe Kodak's crew isn't as tough as he portrays them to be in the film. The next Kodak enemy on our list is 50 Cent. The beef began in April 2019, when Kodak Black viciously trolled both The Game and 50 Cent by accusing them of being notoriously male strippers. Kodak Black insults The Game and brings 50 Cent into the feud by bringing up that the two of them have a tumultuous past together. Kodak Black has been very active on social media, constantly picking fights with people like T.I. and The Game, offending a large number of people with his outrageous comments. The first incident that brought negative attention to the rapper was when he made a disrespectful move on Lauren London, just a few days after Nipsey Hussle, her boyfriend and the father of her child had passed away in Los Angeles. After making a move on Nipsey Hussle's girlfriend, Lauren London, Kodak Black faced severe backlash from the internet community. The game gave a furious response in his Instagram story after Kodak Black posted a video in which he claimed that Lauren London was fitting to be a whole widow and invited her to call his line. Kodak also invited Lauren London to speak with him directly. Soon after, Kodak has clapped back at the game. He did this by Petty using the star and 50 Cent's collaboration song against him. Before bringing the game into the conversation, Kodak Black played Hate It or Love It. 50 Cent grabbed that boy off the pole. Kodak said in his video referring to remarks made by the game's stepfather 
a number of years ago about the game being a male stripper. Kodak was referring to the comments made by the game's stepfather. You used to be a male stripper, and you were known for shaking your booty. 50 Cent felt compelled to rescue you from the pole in order to find out what you were talking about. Hey, just give me some space. Put an end to bringing up my name. It would be best if we all just leave me alone, if Lauren hasn't said anything yet. Everything that happened here is a direct result of the game's response to Kodak's comments, which consisted of him swearing at him. This shit go for Kodak Black and any other nigga disrespecting my nigga Nip name. His legacy, his family, nigga. Keep my nigga name out your fucking mouth, nigga. Keep his girl's name out your fucking mouth, nigga. The fuck wrong with you new niggas? No respect having ass niggas, man. This new generation, y'all fucked up in the head, nigga. Stop disrespecting my nigga's name, man. This shit for real. My nigga died out here in these fucking streets, nigga. For the, doing the right motherfucking thing. Doing good for fucking people. And the first thing niggas want to do after his untimely demise is disrespect his fucking name. Nah, nigga. I ain't going for that. Keep my nigga's name out. After Kodak's comments about Lauren London, T.I. also approached the Kodak Black with much angry. You got a packet, nigga. Fix that shit. Quickly. Expeditiously. Nigga. You got a packet, nigga. Ain't nobody else gonna say it, nigga. I done said it to you, nigga. And if I see you, I'm gonna say it in your face, nigga. You out of pocket, nigga. Kodak Black also had beef with Lil Wayne, which has stirred up mighty between the rappers. The whole story started when Lil Wayne was asked about a number of up and coming rappers during an interview in 2016. He responded as follows I swear to God, I didn't know you were saying people's names just now, so that should probably answer your question. I just go about my business, Kodak Black tweeted. Lil Wayne ate the best fucking rapper alive, I am. This was an unexpected turn of events. Hey, listen here, man. Tell Lil Wayne, fight me. You know what I'm saying? We finna get in the brain, we finna fight, me and Lil Wayne. We finna knock that stupid ass nigga out. And, and if you whoop me, he the best, the best rapper alive, you heard? I got my jewelry on it. He got his jewelry on it. I got my whole money, my jewelry, my highs, everything on it. Tell the Wayne, fight me in the rain, and I'm gonna beat his stupid ass, and I bet everything on it. Since Soldier Boy and Chris Brown doing it, I don't even need no trainer. I don't need Floyd Mayweather, Adrian Brown. Now one of these niggas out on it. I'm gonna beat Lil Wayne's stupid ass. Watch. And whoever wins, they the best right by the eye. You heard? I got eight book in the studio right now. I'm fading. A thousand. One K. Tell Lil Wayne if he ain't scared of me. Since then, Kodak Black me. had continuously attacked Lil Wayne. During that entire period, Lil Wayne maintained his silence. One more in the month of September 2019, Kodak Black was at the LIV nightclub in Miami and anticipated seeing Wayne there. Kodak Black became irate when his Codeine Dreaming collaborator did not show up. And as a result, he grabbed the microphone and yelled at him. Where has Lil Wayne been hiding? You effing maggot, he yelled at the assembled people. You ought to have passed away when you were just a young child. Lil Wayne, now. Lil Wayne. <laughs> you play, you play. You fucking maggot, you sit it down and you was a baby. You play, you lay, you run up, you get done up, fight the game, you're dead, fly as there was, time to chat, what, freedom cool, we about to come on soon on the field. Following the publication of the live video, Lil Wayne's daughter, Regina Carter, spoke up in defense of her father. You newer, younger rappers need to start recognizing and respect the GOAT's greatness. My father didn't cause any trouble for anyone, she wrote. You won't even respond to what he said. Lil Wayne is completely immersed in his own world, therefore you should give him some space. Kodak fired back, referring to her as Wayne's little bald-headed daughter in her insults. He said that nobody should say anything to that little girl because she was innocent. First of all, nobody ain't say nothing about your daddy, so don't be coming at me like that. I don't know what you're talking about. I ain't no shoddy. I ain't no peon, said Kodak Black. And they ended it there till date. Man, dude, I'm in a club. They talking about dude say he finna pull up on you and come show you some love. That's what they say. That's what they say. They say Lil Wayne finna come pull up and come show you some love, bro. So now the club, at the end, I say, where Lil Wayne at? Why y'all trying to make it seem like a nigga likes 
Why y'all trying to make a scene like a nigga about, like, like said some crazy shit? Like, oh, oh, like a nigga want to fight. Lil Wayne say he finna gonna pull up, show me some love. Why the fuck would I touch Lil Wayne, man? Come on now, man. Lil Wayne getting old. Lil Wayne getting old. Lil Wayne, like, come on now, bro. Come on now, man. The Carter. Carter. But Kodak didn't stop there. He still got on another beef with Soldier Boy, which stirred up and mighty between the rappers till date. Some years back, Soldier Boy experienced a string of unfortunate events because of his hilarious appearance on the Love and Hip Hop Hollywood reunion, which led to the spread of hilarious memes on Twitter. He became involved in a lot of beef with Kodak Black. Hey man, fuck Kodak Black, man. Yeah, fuck Kodak Black. Why niggas, niggas taking shots for yeah, no reason, man? Nigga, you mad cause I ain't pull up to the studio and make a song with your weak nigga, ass, nigga. Niggas we won't hang out hang so with bad, Shine bro. Kingston and Rich the Kid, but you got a problem with Soldier, nigga? Why I beat your ass, fuck? So Kodak Black also made the decision to target him. Soldier Boy, in a post that he published on Instagram, he wrote, Fuck you, Soldier Boy. Discover your own style as the caption to a video that he recently posted of himself moving around and dancing on stage during a performance. It seemed like Kodak Black thinks that Soldier is copying some part of his style. On various social media platforms, Soldier Boy disses Kodak Black. The verbal scuffle continued after that point. While seated on an airplane, presumably just before takeoff, Soldier continued his attack on Kodak Black. I beat your ass. Fuck Kodak Black, nigga, you a bitch. Everybody go on in their comments and say fuck Kodak Black. I'm on a motherfucking flight right now, nigga, going to get this money. But you a bitch, you mad because I ain't do a song with you, nigga. Young M.A who you should know from the song But that shit chicken, why she texting me? Why she keep calling my phone, speaking sexually? Every time I'm out, why she stressing me? You call her Stephanie, I call her Heffany I don't open doors for her 2019 saw a war of words between Kodak Black and Young M.A. that has captured the attention of the rap community. This war of words has inspired many discussions and topics such as harassment, sexuality, misogyny, and rape culture. The beef between the two rappers has brought Kodak Black's history of alleged sexual misconduct back into the spotlight. The strange back and forth between Kodak Black and Young M.A. has reached a peak when Kodak Black fired his shot at Young M.A. The tussle between Kodak Black and Young M.A. started when Kodak Black posted a comment, both of y'all get it, on Instagram expressing his admiration for Young M.A. on Nicki Minaj's post of herself and Young M.A. Many people interpreted the statement to mean that he was making a sexual advance towards Nicki Minaj and Young M.A. In less than a week after he made his first comment on Nicki Minaj and Young M.A.'s Instagram post, Kodak Black doubled down on his sentiments while singing out the latter by dropping Young M, a name on his most recent single, Pimping Ain't hey, Easy. New AP, flood, water on my butt like a tub. I got my little gun in the club. Don't worry about me, I'm a thug. If you kill a street nigga, get a dime. If you kill a rap nigga, get a dub. Big chain on my neck, don't budge. Fucking days low like a stud. The song Pimping It Easy, which was accompanied by a music video that was directed by Kodak Black and Sway Season, makes multiple sexual advances towards Young M.A. In addition to making references to the rapper's sexuality, Kodak continued to name drop the rapper on the song's second verse, rapping, I don't even see the confusion, I'm fucking Young M.A. long as she got a coochie. Say she got the scrap in the toilet, say she put the crack in her booty. As a result of Kodak's repeated use of Young M.A.'s name on the song Pimping It Easy, both supporters and critics of Young M.A. have taken notice of the song, which has generated anticipation for her response to Kodak Black's song. In response, Young M.A. took to social media a few weeks after Kodak Black's initial comments in order to address the growing controversy. The fuck, bro? Y'all niggas is weird. Yeah. Nah, for real. Them niggas got me tight for real, bro. Real G shit, niggas got me tight cause I don't understand why niggas think that's so cool to be like that. Yeah. That's not cool. Like man. like back in the day, my nigga, like that shit was not cool, bro. That shit was for our community, y'all think that shit cool, bro? For our community to be fucking junkies, stupid. Niggas praise that shit. That shit ain't cool, bro. I don't give a fuck what y'all talking about. I don't give a fuck who think that shit cool. I don't give a fuck if niggas think I'm crazy. I don't give a fuck, nigga. That shit is not cool. Fuck wrong with y'all. Smoke some weed, cool. You know what I mean? Weed ain't gonna hurt nobody. 
Later on, Young and Maeve revealed that she had every intention of confronting Kodak about his remarks regarding her appearance at the Pot of Gold Festival in Arizona, which they were both scheduled to perform at. She greeted him with the words, and he had the, he had the, uh, the shit tomorrow, at the pot of gold shit. I'll see him tomorrow. I'll holler at him if I get a chance to see him. Y'all niggas be, y'all do this internet shit too much, bro. I don't do this internet, I don't like the internet shit, bro. I, I, deal, with, I deal with my issues when I when, when in person. Y'all niggas dick eating that shit, bro, like a motherfucker. God damn, bro. Chill. And it be niggas, why y'all niggas is on that Her tirade came to an end when she asked, If I don't care about it, why do you all care about it? Kodak Black, on the other hand, gave a response to Young Ami's remarks during his Instagram live session the following day, which was the day after both rappers had performed at the Pot of Gold Festival in Arizona. Don't make, don't make my dog mad, man. Yeah, y'all start making on Young me mad, man. That's my dog, I'm gonna do that, man. We gonna catch up and stuff like that. I just wanna I just wanna be the homie like the forever like I just wanna be be the forever homie like and a cut, vibe, woo 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 whenever you make your mind up, I'm here. <laughs> I'm talking about how you a girl but don't want your pussy penetrated. Hot. <laughs> The remarks made by Kodak have elicited a resounding outrage from members of the hip-hop community, as well as members of the LGBTQ community, who characterize Kodak's remarks as repulsive and predatory. After that, Young M.A. participated in yet another Instagram Live session, during which she repeated her earlier statements regarding Kodak Black. M.A. chided her fans for helping to stoke the fires of controversy, adding that she would address the situation in her own time. About the people in the comments that kept mentioning the shit, mentioning the shit, mentioning the shit. And I'm just like, yo, why y'all still on that, bro? Like, get off that, get off that, get off that situation, y'all dick eating. Like, if, if, if when I'm ready to confront this shit, or how I'm gonna handle it, then I'll handle it that way. Why y'all still talking about it? You know what I mean? And that was that. Y'all just be extra, bro. Extra. Like, y'all motherfuckers, I know I'm a female, stupid. Y'all niggas ain't gotta say that. I know that, nigga. But at the end of the day, nigga, that's not my preference. Like, y'all motherfuckers, that's what I said. Y'all weird. Y'all call me weird. I know I'm weird sometimes. I don't give a fuck. After that, I'm Kodak weird. Black I seems know to try I'm to weird. downplay I'm the importance that. of his comments during a later Instagram live session. This was because of the backlash he got for saying he was in love with Young M.A. Bro, come on, you gotta get real here. I'm way too cool for that bullshit. This statement was made by Kodak Black in reference to his sexual advances made towards Young M.A. And I have far too many resources to pursue that course of action. Why on earth would I want to go that way? All the way over there, I was making up a story, I was completely making this stuff up, man. Kodak also asked his fans to leave Young M.A. alone due to the people being sensitive. A gesture that was symbolic of the rapper waving the white flag and putting an end to his rift with Young M.A. And that was how it ended for the beef between her and Kodak. Dear yeah, young M.A., you already know this Kodak, babe. You know I love you. I like you. I, I want to wife you and pipe you. I know I'm just an ugly nigga from the ugly corner. But for you, I change all that. For real. I want us to go and be something. I want to know. If you gonna let me drive the boat, can I try the boat, please? I wanna do everything you wanna do. I like your braids. I like the shape up on your braids. I like the braids that's braided on your braids. I wanna braid your braids forever, for life. Ain't no separating us. P.S. Glee! Glee! Moving forward, let's talk about what happened with Kodak Black and Jack Boy. You all should know Jack Boy from most of Kodak Black's songs. For example, the song Testimony, where he said, Jack Boy's my G. We like Batman and Robin. The fight all started when Kodak Black posted a tweet on June 29th, 2021, that seemed to give Jack Boy the impression that the rapper was taking a shot at him. The text of the tweet was, Made a M off of Lil Jack. 
In addition to this, he stated that business must be stood on. It has taken long enough. Kodak brought his tirade to a close by issuing the following concluding statement. These are ungrateful. Soon after, Jack Boyd provided a response to the tweets by posting the lyrics to the song Vouch by Kevin Gates. But the people in my business, I've got court appointments, I've got lawyers, and this is how we rot. They claimed that they owned the copyright to my name and demanded $1 million. The label mocked me in my face and I had to pay for it out of my own pocket. In an Instagram post that he published the following day, Kodak Black reiterated his desire to move on and his readiness to put the drama in the past in an Instagram post that he published the following day. He tweeted, It's as fucked up feeling that you can't even describe how you feel. Then funerals turn into photo shoots and you cannot even grieve in peace, Kodak Black says. After that, Kodak Black sent Jack Boy an email that read, Let's use this as a wake-up call. Several people on social media had the opinion that the beef was fake, while others were interested in learning more about the specifics. A commenter on Twitter remarked, People say all kinds of stuff. We are in the dark about the true nature of the situation. What I'm trying to get across is that Jack Boy has worked hard and earned where he is now, so we shouldn't discredit him. While Kodak made things easier for him, it is his own determination what was ultimately that led to his success. After being quiet for a long time, Jack Boy finally said something on Instagram Live. Stop it, boy, you is ass, you is lame, you goofy, and you talk about, oh, I be in the hood every day, yeah, you know, you know why I'm not pulling around, you goofy ass niggas, and it's not because of you. It's stop trying to get me a charge, stop trying to get me charged, you know why I'm pulling up to the hood, stop trying to get me sentenced, you know why I'm pulling up to the hood, and it's about action, it's about action, nigga, you know why, fuck you talk about, you see this? Red, I leave other niggas' bloods out there. You know that. You know that. Why would I why would I pull up to some shit I shined on last time? Why? Why would I pull up to somewhere I shined on? And I know y'all niggas ain't. You heard T Grizzly? He said you could go back to your hood. I can't because I robbed all of them. Fuck you talking about. After all that was said and done, Kodak Black responded. I've been trying to play it like we scraped this my little nigga. This my little nigga, you know what I'm saying? But this what you want, so it's like go live with me, homie. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you take so long or what you call it. I'd be like, J you can't say nothing about me. Homie, I taught you how to walk, little nigga. Fuck you tell me. You tell J to go live. Never run away. None of that shit. Niggas just try to kill your little stupid ass. You know what I'm saying? You just never run away. You know what I'm saying? So, stop all this shit talking about you and see me and tell me that I'm lame. Fuck I fuck. Man, come on man. Come on man. Come on man. I told you how to walk, man. Come on man. Stop that shit, man. Come on dog. Get on this slide, little bruh. You know a nigga love you, fam. That just goes to show like you fuck niggas ain't loyal. If a nigga, I don't give a fuck who Last but not least, as discussed. Kodak has gained many enemies within his career and has frustrated a lot of people on social media. Well, that is all for today's video. If you know anyone I didn't mention, let me know down below in the comments. Also, let me know what topics and rappers you would want me to make videos on like this. And next also, don't forget to destroy the like button. Subscribe to the Rap Messiah channel if you love watching detailed rap documentary videos like the one you just watched. Also, if you've not seen my video on the real story of Lil Baby, go check that out. I'll put that on the screen right now. I'll see you there. Bye.